After the great success of the bench ranking video, you guys thought I was kinda desperate for Hollow Knight content since it's taking millions and I mean millions of years for Silkson to release. And that's true! Everything else has already been done and as a small creator I needed to set myself apart from the rest by ranking benches, 52 to be exact. Couldn't even sit on this piece of sh- But now, since the Miles Nugget community has grown, it is time to do a different ranking. A more popular one. Boss ranking! Hollow Knight is known for its bosses because they are epic and difficult. And all 46 of them are unique in their own special way. Some more special than others. I'm gonna rank them all from worst to best in a sense of fun and enjoyment. So this is not a difficulty ranking because I think we can all agree that this stinky head will be at the top. My ranking will be based on their original fight, but also the fight in the pantheons with all your upgrades. From a casual perspective. CASUAL. And you guys thought my bench video was controversial with the Salubra and the Ancestral Mount bench? Well, strap yourself in, because you're in for a ride. And if you disagree with something on my list, just know that everything is based on facts. <laughs> which means you're basically disagreeing with science. And you don't want to be that guy. So without further ado, let's get ranking. Before we begin with the worst boss, I want you guys to take a wild guess on who it could be. Just imagine it and shout it at your screen right now. It's Markov. It's Markov. It's Markov. It will always be Markov and it will never not be Markov. You can't spell Markov without the M. The M of murder me right now with your stabby nails and sonic speed shield. Markov. Markov is the most spammy, most annoying, most random boss out of them all. Dream bosses aren't really known to be anyone's favorite and mostly have one bullet hell attack that is very annoying to dodge. And Markov took that way too seriously. Every second there will at least be two knives coming your direction and you practically get no healing time. Then when he spins his shield around faster than the speed of light, you may find time to heal. And if you thought that was it, you're in luck. In the second phase he gets two shields, throws knives at a significant higher rate, and if you're doing this fight in Pantheon 5, the floor is control all deleted. Yes, you can get good at this fight, to the point where you take no damage, and it's one of the easiest bosses. But does that change the fact that he's at the bottom of the list? No, of course not. Whenever I see Marco, I'm not gonna be like, Wow, I love this boss fight. It's so easy and I love the fact that he throws knives at me. Yeah, this boss is utter trash and you can't change my mind. Number 45. Nightmare King Grim. I know it's controversial, but I'm not really a fan of this boss. It's... A little too annoying. I'm kidding, don't worry. The list is not gonna be that controversial. Number 45. Winged Nask. I only recently found my passionate hatred for this disgusting piece of a boss. But damn, they could have chosen any boss to have an extra form and Nask would have definitely not be my first pick. Let alone ruin the whole concept of this boss. This is not a new version of Nask. This is a new version of Fench Fly King. And it's not even better. How could you ruin something so bad? They have the exact same attack, but Winged Nas just has some extra fluids he wants to share on the arena. Mmm, tasty. It's really hard to predict where all the acid is gonna land, and it just basically becomes a gamble. And then this thing's hitbox. If I was a programmer, I would give it a hitbox of around this size. But no! This seemed like a good idea at Team Cherry. Good luck jumping over it, lol. This fight, as you may have seen in my video, could be a run ender for Pantheon 5. And it doesn't even feel like your fault. Great. At the bottom of the list you go. Number 44. Oblobbles. <sighs> it feels a little mean putting them here. They look very cute and they love each other. And that's about it. As you may have noticed, I don't like random spammy attacks in my boss fight. And this is the definition of random spam attack. I can just never properly dodge their attacks and just naturally tank a lot of hits here. Now don't you dare tell me I have a skill issue because this is more the case of a brain issue or an eye issue. In the first half of the fight there's just too much on screen that my brain is just like and in the second half of the fight, the projectiles are just way too fast that my eyes see some sort of Van Gogh coming at the speed of light. I really like their design and the lore behind them, but the fight just sucks, man. Number 43. 
no eyes. For someone with no eyes, no eyes is pretty good at f***ing me over every second. This was the only dream warrior I died to on my first playthrough. Yes, I defeated Marco first try because there was a floor back then. But I never had any joy while fighting no eyes. Not only because the fight sucks, but also because I don't think they want me to have fun here. Her ghosts are a little more predictable than the other bull hell of Oblobbles, but that's where the arena comes in. If you get hit by a ghost, you could get your ass kicked right into the spikes. Oh, find a safe spot right in the middle? Well, good luck with that because the boss is up here somewhere. Unless you want to sit here for a good 30 minutes and listen to... This. Just a very annoying fight. Speaking of annoying fights... Number 42. Marmu. Adorable little Marmu. She's so cute with her little face. Just recently I learned that it's a she from a, from a random comment. However, don't let that little face deceive you. Because before you know it, there's literally no chance to heal here. Unless you're cool and you do one of these. But that's about it. A game of ping pong. Just kill him fast before he kills you. Number 41. Fenchfly King. Some of you may be surprised as to why I put this basic ass boss this high. One simple reason. It doesn't have spam attacks. You mostly need to play the waiting game here and then he swoops down, you hit him and a few hits later he's dead. You don't even have to do that if you want, you could just <clears throat> Although it is a basic boring boss, it is a quick and easy one, which is always better than this. Now that all the complete garbage is out of the way, it is time for the bosses that aren't completely pulling the organs out of my body. But still very basic and slightly annoying. Kicking it off with number 40, Cross Mother. This was the first boss I ever fought, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. She bounces around a little bit, does a little bit of a swoop, and she's annoying while trying to kill her as fast as possible in the pantheons. Stop, stop, just let me hit you, okay? Number 39, Massive Moss Charger. Mossy over here is always the joke of the community. He's so easy, it's just a boosh, but you know what? He deserves way better! Massive Moss Charger only has two attacks, but that's Mossy's strength. Which one is it gonna be? You need to be prepared for both, the jump or the dash. You guys can tell me you have had more trouble with Mr. Poofly swooping down at you, while Mossy has a variety of surprise attacks. Sleep tight, little boy. Maybe tomorrow people will appreciate you. In my heart, I'll always put you at my number one. Number 38, Flukemar. A literal Minecraft spawner made it this high. What? <laughs> the fight is over in like, what, 10 seconds? But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy those 10 seconds. Don't tell the fluke from the bench ranking video I'm cheating on her. Number 37, Soul Warrior. This guy was way too hard in the early game. My man teleported like there was no tomorrow and just... Like, chill out, man. Not only him, but just like everything in Soul Sanctum. They've probably not seen their grandchildren in a good 50 years. But yeah, Soul Warrior is very annoying to fight. Especially in the Pantheons, because I just want to be done with him. But then he teleports away for the 50th time. Can't believe I put him this high. Number 36. Brooding Moloch. Projectiles, projectiles, too many projectiles. At least you can get into a good rhythm while fighting Brooding Moloch. Dodging, hitting, flying, dodging, getting hit, dodge, hit... And BOOM! It's that easy. This boss also gives enough opportunities to heal, so he's tolerable. Number 35. Elder Who. Get ready for a lot of dream warriors. So, if I'm correct, everyone hates you, but I don't get it. This is one of the more enjoyable dream warriors in my opinion. It's still not enjoyable, but hey, we're getting there. Instead of everything being random projectile crap, it is structured projectile crap. Just stay in between the gaps, or if you don't want to do that, just shadow dash and ignore the whole fight entirely. This boss provides a lot of player flexibility. If you're gonna hate on a dream warrior, do it on Markov. Number 34, Zero. More like Zero, bi- This is probably everyone's first dream warrior, and it's also a good introduction on how annoying all the dream warriors are gonna be. <coughs> Luckily, Zero's attack is very basic. The only thing you really need to watch out for is when his blades come back to him. But if you want, you can just stay on the platform here to heal. Unless you're in Patio 5, where they remove the floor again. Number 33. Gorp. It's Gorp. Number 32. Galleon. 
are mateys, it's your boy Gallion, and I'm apparently a pirate YouTuber or, or something. Gallion is definitely the coolest out of the Dream Warriors. I was really surprised when I stumbled upon his room out of nowhere and just found him chilling here. His attack is very easy to understand and you can easily get into the flow with this one. It's sort of like Marmu, but just the non bullcrap version. I like his lore, I like his attacks, but as a Dream Warrior you can't really get much higher than this placement. Can we get much higher? Number 31. Nosk. Is this controversial? Uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of Nask. The build-up was amazing, the dark lore behind him was great, but the fight, not so much. I can't really go full offensive mode here because he runs like the average spider here inside my house. So I mostly stay under the OP hiding spot, however that does lead to a lot of waiting. I can probably get a lot better at this fight, that argument could be made for every boss, but I just can't really get into the flow with this fight, especially because there's random acid spam all over the place again. Sorry Nask, actually I'm not sorry for off. Now we're on to the good stuff. Every boss from this point on has at least a little bit of depth to it, and it feels a lot more fair than what we've seen before. Well, except for number 30, Enrage Guardian. This boss is a case of more damage doesn't immediately equal more fun. This guy thinks he's the goat and so good at making you die, but it's really the ceiling lasers doing the hefty lifting here. In a fight against Crystal Guardian, I was completely fine with the little bit of randomness they put into it with the lasers, because it's not that big of a deal if you get hit by one of them. And let's be real, this guy would have otherwise been way too easy. <laughs> But getting hit by a random laser at the Enraged Guardian could frick over your entire fight. It feels annoying getting punished by losing two masks for something that you can't really do anything about. Number 29. God Tamer. It does kinda hurt putting the God Tamer so low because they have sick designs, cool lore, and they are unique by being a duo fight with two enemies that don't look exactly like each other. But let's break down the fight a little bit. You only want to attack the beast since the fight is automatically over if you kill him. So you mostly just pogo on him for the whole fight. Then when he rolls just wait for him to finish and start pogoing again. But watch out for his random acid attack that stays on the floor for a while. We all know I love my random acid attack. Do that a couple of times and he's dead. Now you might be thinking what does the tamer do in this fight? And to be honest I don't know. I just ignore him and let him do his thing, he's just kinda there. And by the way, is there any clue somewhere that you need to defeat the beast first instead of the tamer? Because it's a bit unfair if someone decides to kill the tamer first instead of the beast and has to be in the boss fight longer because of that. Or is that just me? Number 28. Traitor Lord. Flowey once said, it's kill or be killed. And that describes this fight perfectly. Either you're gonna be completely destroyed, or she's gonna get completely destroyed. Cloth doesn't get to pick. Trader Lord deals double damage, so you better watch your ass, or you're gonna have no ass after that. I like how fast paced this fight is with high stakes, but with a strategy of staying close to her and dashing at the same time as she does, you should never be in any trouble. This fight will be over quick, and it can feel a little underwhelming sometimes because of it. But nothing to complain about here when it comes to her attack variety. Number 27, Crystal Guardian. There he is. This is an example of a simple boss fight being pretty good. You'll probably fight him without having monarch wings, so dodging his lasers was always a pretty fun challenge. And I know what you're saying. How can you rank this boring boss above this complex, epic, heart-raising boss of a lord that betrays her tribe? First of all, you're disagreeing with science. These are facts. How could you forget? You dummy. And besides, sometimes you've got to appreciate the beauty of simplicity, but most importantly, he's not annoying. Number 26, Umu. Umu is the equivalent of these level 1 new versus level 100 mafia boss ads or my mom versus my dad. You have the Umu fight you fight in the teacher's archives, but you also have the one in the pantheons. In the archives you will get help from your good friend Quirrell and have an epic battle together. And in the pantheons, you have this bullshit. Why? Literally just why? We are in the dream of this random guy, why couldn't he dream about our boy Quirrell? I will leave that to the lore experts. Anyway, this boss is unique since it's mostly platforming and dodging until you get the chance to attack. And although a lot of bull honky can happen here, it is a nice change of pace than from your average boss. So Umu, good job. Number 25, False Knight. Now we're getting to the bosses that I would actually consider good. 
and I have a lot of respect for this guy. This is the best introduction boss ever. He's big, he's fierce, and he's here to kill you. This might be one of the most intimidating looking foes. But when it comes down to it, uh, he, uh, he uh, definitely has some weak spots. But any beginner like me probably struggles against this fight. Because you forgot what the difference was between healing and slashing. This greatly introduces you to the game and what's to come. And he's also a really easy boss to kill fast in the pantheons, making him a very satisfying boss. Number 24. The Collector. The Collector is kinda crazy. Like, he would murder your family if you don't watch out. The Collector can be really tough or really easy depending on the state of your nail. If you can one it KO every enemy that he spawns, you should be in no trouble. It does make the fight more enjoyable that way in my opinion. Because you can get into a nice rhythm without millions of Venge flies trying to kill you. Lore wise, he's fantastic of course, which really adds to the charm of this boss. His craziness. Number 23. Grim. Okay, so normal Grim is an interesting one. First of all, his battle team is amazing of course, let's get that out of the way. Grim has really cool attacks as we all know, but not as cool as our beloved Nightmare King version. They are a lot slower in comparison and while fighting this boss I had to wait a lot before getting any chance to hit him. Weirdly enough this is a boss I've never died to even on my first attempt at like 7 masks and not a whole lot of upgrades. That's because you do get a lot of healing opportunities in between attacks. However, while fighting him, I found it to be a little on the long side. I don't know if it's because it's not as tense as Nightmare King Grim, or if he actually takes a longer time to kill because of his slower attacks. I don't know. I know there's lots of ways to kill him way faster, but again, from a casual perspective, stop typing that comment that you can beat him in 10 seconds, I don't care. So basically, everything about this fight is amazing, but it is on the long side. Number 22. Broken Vessel. What I love about Broken Vessel is that you're basically fighting one of your own siblings, but of course, infected. Fighting him for the first time felt really stressful and hard, but once you get it down, he felt really satisfying. And that is the case for almost all the bosses that are around the same size as you are. It feels like a fair fight and it feels great demolishing him to smithereens after they owned you the first time around. Love these type of bosses. Number 21. Hive Knight. The Taco Bell B. I might be as surprised as you are, but... Over the times, I've grown to love this little bee. He didn't leave the greatest impression on me because I just face tanked through all of his attacks on my first attempt. But the video that I made on Pantheon 3 actually made me appreciate this fight much more. His attacks are of course bee related and he can teleport for some reason. Hopefully this is not an accurate representation of real life or else I'm gonna be super paranoid every time I sleep. But because of this, it keeps you a little bit on your toes and make you feel more engaged in this fight than the average boss. However, the most important thing that makes me like this fight is this f***ing banger. Get ready, because we're entering the top 20. All the bosses from this point on are gonna be really good, and the complaints are gonna be minimal. And what a better way to start it off than the one and only number 20, the Hollow Knight. Hey, that's the game I'm playing. When it comes to boss fights in Hollow Knight, the name of the game falls kinda under the radar. There's a reason they named their game Hollow Knight and not Massive Moss Charger. Although I wouldn't be against that. The fight against the Hollow Knight is especially great at one thing. Making this fight feel really epic. And tell a story. That's, That's two, two things actually, okay. okay. We all know the story that the Hollow Knight is infected and that you're gonna be the next vessel to take over that infection. In the normal ending at least. And while fighting the Hollow Knight you can clearly see that he's also trying to end his misery. By stabbing himself multiple times. The Hollow Knight has a lot of different moves you need to watch out for. And could be overwhelming for your first few attempts. But once you get through the first few phases, you probably don't need to worry anymore. Because he's just stabbing himself a lot at the end. Because of that, this fight is definitely on the easier side. But the build up to this fight, breaking the chains while the Hollow Knight watches you, the epic music and the story the boss tells while fighting him left an amazing first impression on me. So, a well deserved number 20. Number 19. The Radiance. Going from one final boss to the other. Radiance is a weird one because it overwhelmed me and underwhelmed me at the same time. If that makes sense. Now after you've collected the Void Heart and then fight the Hollow Knight, Hornet comes in to tell you to... Get the... Are you insulting me? Get over here you little piece of crap. But you could also decide to go into the Hollow Knight's dreams to fight the Radiance. AKA the infection. AKA the reason for all of these annoying spam attacks from the other bosses. The Radiance is a tough one because she can spawn random balls of light, random beams of light, random walls of light, random spikes out of the floor and random blades out of our face. It's random. And everything also does double damage. After completing the first phase, the arena changes so that it becomes a little like Pantheon 5 Markov. 
Yes, I've always wanted that. And after that you need to climb to the top and beat up the Radiance with all your siblings. Nice. Believe it or not, but because this fight isn't that long, you can tank your way through a lot in this fight. That's why I beat it on my second or third try, I believe. It feels epic, it feels grand, but it's also over pretty quick. And I don't know if I'm the only one, but seeing the title screen for Radiance feels like using Discord light mode for 2 seconds. Oh! Number 18, Grey Prince Zoot. I can't believe I put this guy this high, but I must admit, I do kinda love this goofball. While ranking Grey Prince Zoot, I was very divided. On the one hand, I hate him, because he is Zoot, and his attacks are random and annoying as fuck. But on the other hand, it is Zoot, which makes it kinda enjoyable. So he was kinda in that grey area for me. Huh? Huh? You would think this guy would be overpowered as hell, since it is in the dream of Breda. Breda, you could get much better by the way, just letting you know. But no, this guy is still as clumsy as ever, but just big. I love the fact that he has all sorts of Zoot minions and that he still swings his nil like he does in the Colosseum. He can feel super unfair sometimes, but Zoot's comedic value compensates for it. Just look at this man. But yeah, GG Zoot, you got a good placement on the list, but you still suck. Number 17, Hornet Protector. Hornet Protector, guys. It doesn't matter if you played Hollow Knight for 400 hours or for 5 hours. Everyone just got beat up by her in the first playthrough. She's reckless. Hornet has some basic attacks like dashing, throwing her nail and the famous spaghetti attack. Oh, I'm so excited to use the spaghetti attack for myself as Silk Song. Someday. <laughs> But Hornet doesn't mess around. It really teaches you that you shouldn't heal at random spots because she doesn't give a damn. But once you got her attacks down, it should be a piece of cake. One of the best early game bosses and also really satisfying to fight in the pantheons. Number 16, Dung Defender. This is a fan favorite boss and for a good reason. Dung Defender can be found in arguably one of the lesser fun areas in my opinion. A lot of creepy flukes, dark tunnels everywhere and overall a pain to traverse. But when stumbling upon Dung Defender at the end of the royal waterways, I was in for a surprise. This is one of the most fun and charming boss fights in the game and I needed that after experiencing this. From his battle team to his great sound effects, everything about this fight just screams fun. The only reason I didn't put him even higher is because he's kind of a pushover when you refine him in the pantheons. Because you can get him out of the ground using the setting dark. Uh, but I still love him. Number 15. Great Nail Sage Sly. Oh my god. One of the most stingy shopkeepers you thought couldn't even hurt a fly. And well, this fight speaks for itself. My guy is rocking a nail 20 times the size of himself and beats the living hell out of you. I'm sorry, okay? I don't want a refund anymore. This fight felt almost impossible on my first few attempts, but slowly learning that keeping distance with this boss is important, for obvious reasons, made this fight a real nail master battle. It's amazing to see Sly in his prime time and see him use all the nail arts that you also learn from the different brothers. The fact that a small little shopkeeper like Sly is such an impressive boss, made me really like him. And that's why I placed him this high on the list. Number 14. Paint Master Sheo. The student has become the master. Because Paint Master Sheo is an amazing boss and outshines his teacher by a good mile. Almost every boss in Hollow Knight fights with either a nil or with an amazing acid spam. Oh, I love that. But Sheo said no to that and followed his passion of art and is now trying to kill you with a spike of paint. I love that every attack can be recognized by the color of his paintbrush and makes you pay attention to not only yourself for dodging, but also the boss to predict his next attack. Seeing this boss in action made me really want an official fight against him somewhere in his hut in Green Path. But this is still amazing. Number 13. Watch your nights. What a surprise to see these boys up here at number 13. The Watcher Knights are notorious for being hard as balls and also annoying as fuck. But that is because you let them overwhelm you. They are pretty simple when it comes to their attacks. They slash, they roll, or they bounce. But it's just a lot of them. Just keep yourself together and focus. And just the fact that it is you against the whole gang of bosses makes you feel pretty darn epic after you've defeated them. But can I just mention how satisfying the sound design on this boss fight is? Just, just listen. Oh, 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 so, oh, sorry, I just, I just got chills for a bit. And you hear this six times you fight against them? The man who created these sounds needs a race. Number 12, White Defender. 
If you thought it was impossible to improve the Dunk Defender, well, then you're wrong, buddy. White Defender isn't really hard per se, he's just straight up fun again. He's even more agile now, and he has sick earth bending powers, and all the while you fight him inside White Palace? Like, sheesh, bro! I'm glad they decided to make a whole DLC around giving Dunk Defender an improved boss fight. Surprisingly, I also never died to this fight because you can get in some sneaky heals in the corner here because his dung balls are basically just DVD logos that almost never hit the corner of the arena. But that doesn't matter to me because it allows me to fully enjoy the fight instead of sweating like a gamer. And not to forget, he has an even sicker battle team than his last one, making this fight feel even more epic than it already was. Number 11. Filled Champion. Now this guy definitely failed at getting in the top 10, but at least he got 11th. This is probably a very personal pick because I don't think he's very popular, but oh damn do I like him. There's something very funny to me that the first boss used as a tutorial is now one of the strongest bosses ever. Double damage, insane movement speed and a lot of anger issues. This boss is very very satisfying in my opinion because it's all about the flow in this one dash as he is about to jump over you and hit him like there's no tomorrow while also dodging all the falling rocks during the entire fight i really like this fight however i had to draw the line at number 11 because there isn't a lot more to him than this but definitely not a field champion rather a w champion the time has come We've gone through all the bosses, except for my personal top 10 favorite. <laughs> I mean, objectively top 10 best bosses. I, I forgot this was based on facts and science and stuff. Uh, all the other bosses we just ranked are nothing compared to the next 10. They are the pinnacle of Hollow Knight boss fights and just left me with a wow on my face. You get what I mean? Just, just a wow. So without further ado, starting the top 10 with... Number 10, Lost Kin. What a battle this was. Lost Kin is basically a more agile version of Broken Vessel, but that's all it needs to be. Like I previously mentioned, I love the bosses that are around the same size as you are, because it feels like an even fight. Except for the part where it is literally using creative mode, like this ain't normal jump height, bro. There's not really time to heal during this fight, except for the staggers, which forces you to, you know, fight the boss you can't goof off or something it's really cool really fast and that's all you need for a good boss like this number nine hornet sentinel there's a good reason hornet is going to be the main character of hollow knight sequel because this fight is just legendary it's so great it's so great it's so great it's just so great just like broken vessel this is an improved version of the first hornet fight way faster in addition to some new attacks she can actually block herself and doesn't just blatantly take all the hits like it is an all you can eat dinner and she can also put up these little spikes that can be in your way if you don't remove them and fighting her in this windy area in kingdom's edge only helps make this fight feel even more epic like this is an all or nothing fight that lies in your hands. A final test before you can find out the truth about yourself. What an amazing fight. Number 8. Brothers Oro and Mato. Wow, what a way these nail masters have come. Although Oro and Mato hated each other the most, them working together made one of the best boss fights. What I adore about this fight is that you start by fighting Oro and then when you defeat him with really no trouble at all, his brother steps in and give each other this amazing stare of let's do it together. I love this fight more than Shio and Sly because Oro and Mato each have a specific nail art you need to watch out for and if you don't keep track of who is who you need to be prepared for a dash slash or a cyclo slash. They also have really sick attacks that they pull off together instead of just waiting like my man. I mean they also do it sometimes but hey they are allowed to do it because they are sick. This fight really shows that the brothers can be an amazing team together and are all around super underrated. Number 7. Mantis Lords. Do I even need to explain? I think I need to explain why it's not higher probably. The Mantis Lords are such an amazing early game boss fight. They are perfect. You start off with one Mantis Lord doing some pretty basic attacks that can still be pretty tough to dodge. But when you're done with that, the other two come in and now you have to dodge everything twice as fast. While you also need to watch out for certain attack combinations that can screw you over if you don't stand in the middle of the arena. Moving around is key in this boss and that was something a lot of new players had to learn which automatically made this fight very memorable when you finally overcome it. The only real downside of this fight is when you refight them with all your upgrades in the pantheons because Let's face it, they don't stand a chance anymore. But luckily, the Godmaster DLC thought of that, which we're gonna see later in the list. Number 6, Soul Master. 
Now Soulmaster is probably the most personal pick to make it this high in comparison to the rest that are very popular amongst the fanbase. But in my opinion Soulmaster was so good that it had to be this high. Placing higher than a lot more complex bosses but what really carried this fight for me was the world building. The Soul Sanctum is a very cool area, but I also hate it. I hate it so much. All the enemies here, the Soul Warrior of course, and the scary music. I hate literally everything about this place. But when I finally came to the end and had to fight the boss, there was a lot on the line. I didn't want to go through this area again, so I had one chance to beat him. Appearing menacingly from the background on the rooftop, I knew this was going to be epic. For an early game boss, Soulmaster has a lot of different attacks, keeping me on my toes for the whole fight. Dodging is a lot of funner, and figuring out ways to get in more hits each time is very satisfying. And to top it all off, he has a surprise final phase after you think you've beat him. Really throwing you off guard if you experience it for the first time. Which is never done with any other boss. Refighting him of course was very easy, which is why he couldn't be any higher than this. This boss left a marvelous impression on me. And I will always stand by the fact that this is an amazing boss. Number 5. Absolute Radiance. Now, I don't really have the rights to rank this boss. Because I've never fought Absolute Radiance for obvious reasons. But I've seen enough of this boss fight and seen enough other opinions to know that this is a very epic and beloved boss. However, I'll leave the honors of explaining why this boss is really good to my friend who has actually done this fight. So let's talk about the Absolute Radiance. It's the final final boss in the game and also pretty clearly one of the best. You think players that are able to make it to the end of the Pantheon of Hallow Nest would be skilled enough to beat this thing. But the Absolute Radiance just has a way of surprising players with a bunch of new stuff. Faster moves, overlapping attacks, super stressful climb to the top, and a super tricky new final phase when you get there. It's kind of just what the Radiance was supposed to be in my mind. It's all topped off by that sweet, sweet double damage. Any hit just reminds you that if you die, you're gonna have to do every boss again to get to this point. Apart from being hard as balls though, it's also a pretty great boss. It kinda just takes everything that was good about the normal Radiance battle and makes it better and more chaotic. I mean, there's a reason why after the first time I got it on Radiant, I just went back and did more attempts immediately after. Like it's just that good. Now my friends would have ranked Abs Red at number 1. But I don't think Abs Red is better than the bosses that are still left to be ranked. There's a lot of randomness into this fight, which means there's always a chance you can get f if you're unlucky. Which is not really something you're waiting for, especially after you've defeated 41 other bosses. Luckily for this boss, it's ranked on the fight itself, otherwise it would have been literally at the bottom of the list. Just because of how bullshit it feels to be sent back to the beginning of Pantheon 5, just because you got unlucky. So yeah, I think a number 5 spot is very good for Absolute Radiance, because in my opinion the other 4 are definitely way more enjoyable. Number 4. Sisters of Battle. This is the fight we all wanted after beating the Mantis Lords. The fight we all needed. In the Godmaster DLC they decided to give two old bosses extra forms. And you can clearly see that Team Cherry can make them super epic. Oh, so hell what the hell is man. this? Sisters of Battle have such a nice surprise to them. Because just like the Mantis Lords it starts off with just one. And when you beat the first Mantis she's like Let me get that booty again. With all three Mantises standing up and fighting you at once. The one problem the original Mantis Lord suffered from, for being too easy when you refight them, is now fixed. This is what the Mantis Lords are. A sick, fierce tribe that have mastered combat together and are now all trying to kill you at the same time. Weaving through all the Mantises is so satisfying and if it wasn't obvious, you can't heal here. It's pure skill at this point. Which I think is fair, because the phase doesn't last too long. Shortly after you kill the first Mantis, you're basically back at the old Mantis Lords again and then it should be no problem to finish the fight. This fight is really short but sweet. Which is probably the main reason why it's not top 3, because I'm just craving more Sisters of Battle goodness. Which is sadly not there. It's a little too short for my liking. Still really amazing. Number 3. Nightmare King Grim. And this time I'm serious. Entering the top 3, we got Nightmare King Grim. He's probably the fan favorite boss of the community and I can definitely agree. However, I don't think he's the absolute best. Everything the original Grim fight suffered from is now fixed. Faster attacks, more attacks and a lot more difficult and most importantly, the sickest banger in the entire game. I mean that wasn't really a problem in the original Grim fight but you know what I mean. Not only is the music itself just a banger, it also starts building up more and more each time you get to the next phase. While the heart in the background also starts glowing brighter and brighter. I think we've all been in a scenario where you suddenly hear the music change to its final stage and your heart is literally going faster than the one in the background and then... 
you probably die. It's basically like you're performing a dance on stage, and the closer you get to finishing your dance, the more nerve-wracking it's gonna be. And that's what this fight basically is. It's a dance between you and Grim, and you need to follow the steps perfectly, or else you're going to get bodied. He dashes, you pogo. He fires bats, you dash. He overwhelms the arena with an entire Mario parkour? Just be Mario! But why isn't this fight the number one, you might be asking? Well, that's because of the fact that this fight is like a dance. You need to follow the steps perfectly to complete this boss fight, and there isn't really much wiggle room for other tactics. Maybe if you're a speedrunner, but how many times do I need to tell you what this list is based off of? Because of this, this fight practically stays the same each time you fight him, and that is exactly what he is missing to be at the top. Number 2. Soul Tyrant. Oh god. Your eyes are not deceiving you. This might be the most controversial pick out of the list. But oh boy, do I love this fight. This is the perfect upgrade the Soul Master needed. This was the first main dream boss I fought. And I was severely lacking the upgrades most people probably had when going into this fight. I had like 6 masks. Only the basic versions of the spells. So I basically just didn't use them. And my nail was weak as frick. And apparently I was crazy enough to go into this. Like I'm literally the guy that was scared of massive moss charger in my first playthrough. Through. How did I have the courage to go into this fight? But it was the best decision I've ever made because this fight was so sick because of it. Super fast teleports, fake outs, crazy soul orb dodging. This guy has it all. Everything feels extremely satisfying to dodge and you have a lot of ways of doing so. You can choose to play really offensive or defensive depending on your playstyle or depending on the amount of panic. But oh my god, the sickest moment was when I was on one mask and I needed to dodge everything in this final surprise phase. Healing isn't an option here anymore and it now comes down to pure skill. And I succeeded. And that gave me one of the most coolest victories I've ever experienced. This pick might be very personal to be a number 2. But I really do believe this is an amazing boss fight that deserves to be a number 2. The only thing dragging Soul Tyrant down is that this is definitely not a really hard fight. Especially after doing it a few times. But there's one boss. And one boss only that fixes this. The boss... That is my definition of the perfect boss in Hollow Knight. Heck, maybe even of all gaming. This is the one and the only perfect boss number one. So the Mighty. I'm kidding, it's Pure Vessel. This choice was so easy for me when I had to pick my favorite boss because this is probably the only boss I want to come back to because of how good he is. Pure Vessel is essentially how the Hollow Knight was in his prime time and holy damn has my guy become washed because this guy is pure perfection. The design, his crazy attacks, the music, oh my god the music. My guy deals double damage like the mad lad he is and because of that you want to dodge like you haven't dodged before. Everything you've learned is now put into practice. Dashing through his spikes, flying over his void tentacles, pogoing him until there's no tomorrow. Finding perfect times to heal or else you know you're gonna get boned. He has it all. This is the vessel chosen to keep everyone protected from the infection. So you bet he's gonna be strong. He has so many different and very unique attacks that I'm always at the edge of my seat. Doesn't matter how many times I've beat him, he always has a surprise in store for me. It's sad that he doesn't have an official boss fight in the White Palace for example, but the greatness of this fight makes up for everything. This is in my definition the perfect boss. The best boss. And although Pure Vessel is the best, it doesn't change the fact that almost all of the other bosses are amazing in their own way as well. Who cares if they are at the bottom or at the top of the list? They all have something unique to offer. With unique attacks, designs, sounds, music and lore. And that really shows that an indie game like Hollow Knight has so much love put into it. Even the fights that were quote unquote really annoying were still enjoyable moments of my Hollow Knight playthrough. And that's why millions of people praise this game to be one of the best games out there. And I can totally understand that. However, I don't agree to that statement. Because this game contains Markov. Wow, we! Oh my god. That was an insane ranking, wasn't it? I want to thank 
everyone for being patient with me because I always underestimate the amount of time that these videos take. So many hours went into the script writing, editing and footage recording. So I really hoped you liked it. So if you want to help me, just share this video, like it, comment, subscribe, whatever. I appreciate every little support you guys can give me. Now, I don't want to be your ranking channel, but if I'm gonna do a Hollow Knight ranking in the future somewhere, I definitely want to make a charm or an area ranking. But for now, I'm done with ranking videos because they take a super long time. And as a content creator, I need to be a little consistent with my uploads. Anyway, I want to thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching, for all the support and the love you gave me. This year has really been insane for me. And we started it off with just 20 subscribers and look where we are right now. So thanks for everything. And I see you in the next video. So bye.